coffee is like uh, one of the biggest uh, part of my life. And, but it's quite interesting though because of I was born in Istanbul, in Turkey, and uh, I'm an Armenian. The coffee is a big part of our life. But here, believe it or not, and I'm not uh, making any uh, Armenian or Turkish coffee, I'm making normal espresso Italian coffee. Uh, I born in Istanbul in the 1965 and born in Istanbul from in Armenian family uh, we used to go to churches and the others goes to uh, mosques and uh, some people many of the people don't go anywhere in fact uh, lots of languages spoken in surrounding me Armenian Kurdish Turkish and in fact some Greeks as well it's a good childhood I have you know find my way to Istanbul University and I studied uh, philosophy and sociology and I graduated from there and then and uh, when I was uh, 27 I immigrated to Australia. We didn't talk about Armenian history that much in that period of time because of it's a very different times uh, because our parents didn't want us to learn about the Armenian past that much in that period of time because of very young vulnerable age uh, but like then when I start uh, investigating a little bit of the Armenian past and I'll start digging in the roots and you start digging in and finding out the Armenian past in that region and all of a sudden and you're realizing how little you know and that's why I start I start my projects as well and I start taking photograph of Armenian heritage. This is Arat from Dobezit, this Turkish side. And this is again from Turkish side, but this is from Armenia. How it looks. And in fact that Arat, uh, it's a beautiful mountain, um, my favorite mountain. In 2008, I think it was, and I was in, in front of my computer, I received this uh, email, from generic email from UNESCO. And I just realized that three Armenian uh, sites in uh, northern Iran and becoming UNESCO inscription, you be part of the program, UNESCO program, uh, UNESCO cultural preservation program. And more I look at the Digin, uh, the storyline, and I find that actually Mirasa Ferengi. Mirasa Ferengi is an equivalent of uh, UNESCO Heritage Cultural Protection Site program. And uh, then in that day, I decided that actually book a ticket to Iran, and a year later I was in Iran. Uh, Saint Tedeus uh, Monastery uh, in um, northern Iran, and this is uh, uh, Western Azerbaijan region. I flew to Urumia. I visit uh, Urumia around the Salmas area, which traditionally part of Armenian history is a big time because of Ar Greater Armenia's border uh, ends in the Urumia. Salmas is always. Armenian population lived in that region and I've, I've done the discovered that important uh, monasteries like St. Tadeus and San Stepanos and take the pictures of it and the landscape and the cemeteries around that area and uh, on the way I find out lots of other things as well. When I just like uh, look at the, all the Armenian uh, elements in that Iran, how they kept and how they preserved, it's fascinating because of many other countries in the neighbor, in the surrounding neighborhood, they erase everything Armenian. But Iran, they kept it in the very, very good uh, phase. For example, the church restorations I saw in, uh, in Iran, it matches to Armenia. 
almost some of them is better than Armenian ways and hope, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble with saying this. <laughs> Whenever I go, if there is an uh, Armenian church, definitely I'll go and introduce myself and I always get help from them because of I'm one of their sons, you know, like in Armenian uh, church is not uh, for only believers. Armenian church is a gathering place for uh, all, the, all the people. And, uh, and I stayed with Armenian families in the Urumia area and they, they didn't know me but they opened their doors to me. I mean, I'm very grateful to them. But I just do something for uh, Armenian history as well in that sort of regard. All the events on 1915 Armenian genocide is cuts our culture in a in very uh, bad way because of we not only lost a great amount of people but we lost the culture Someone contact me from Art Gallery of New South Wales and they're doing an event for Iran. They want me to do a representation, like a presentation of what I, what I was uh, doing with Iran photos. And eventually I'll um, just meet the Iranian ambassador in that time in Canberra. And I went there and I met the cultural attaché in that period of time, that newly appointed cultural attaché. Cultural attaché from uh, Yerevan to Australia. Uh, he suggested that actually why don't you write a book about Iran and, uh, and I said to him I'm very happy to write the book but the book I would like to write is about uh, Australian Armenian with the perspective of uh, my Australian Armenian heritage and he was very happy with that one and uh, an Iranian uh, embassy and the cultural attaché helped me to put the book together and uh, we launched the book and it's been uh, quite a good success so far. My signature uh, photos mainly, I enhance the colors a little bit and almost like how I see it, not how the camera sees it. I visited Isfahan. Isfahan is actually an important uh, part of my trip. And, uh, and also it's a very big section of my book is about Isfahan as well. The city getting with empty with Armenians, lots of immigration is on the, on the agenda now and many Armenians left or still some living in that area for finding a better future in, uh, elsewhere. Uh, I was in Kerman, it was Friday, and uh, usually there are lots of uh, transport to go to Kerman, Kerman to Mahan. Mahan is actually specifically uh, was on my list because of I went to visit one of important Sufi shrines, Nimetullah Valihan shrine in, the, in the Mahan. Uh, but there is no any transportation or anything. With my broken Farsi, I start talking with this man with his nine-year-old daughter. And at the end, we realize that uh, it's half an hour uh, walk from the next uh, shared taxi place. 
they describe it to me. I start walking and five minutes later and the entire family uh, turn up with their uh, Nissan uh, pickups, you know, like it's very, uh, very common in Iran. And in the, usually they come in blue, and uh, but it, it was white. I remember uh, very brief, uh, very sort of clearly. And all the family in the like uh, two sons, that daughter, husband and wife, they were all in the front. And uh, three of them moved at the back, and I was sitting there, there with one of the older sons. They dropped me to share taxi place. I, I can say a few words, but I'm getting nervous because of uh, uh, because of my accent probably is not that good. And uh, I say, um, uh, say, Khodafes is one of the words I like, but I use that one at the end. Uh, but Hale uh, Shoma Chetore, you know, like it's a bit, bit more formal, I guess. And if I push myself and I can say a few words, but the, my favorite one I love and I learn no keratem. You know, like this is actually probably uh, the word is opens every door in Iran. Mm -hmm.